Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Come celebrate 27 years of the Hamptons International Film Festival, October 10th through the 14th. Five days, over 150 films from around the world. Panel discussions, presentations, and some very special events. Get your tickets and passes now at HamptonsFilmFest.org. Follow us on social media at Hamptons Film. The 27th Hamptons International Film Festival, October 10th through the 14th. Catch the best films of the year, Columbus Day weekend. veel van de wereld gezien hebben ondertussen. Wat bleef? Hij ging toch wilde dieren vaccineren in Afrika, is dat niet? Gisteren was hij echt aan het banken, ja. Het rechterpootje was het. Kijk, ik weet één ding zeker. Je hebt een goeie man. Hé, hey, Dorien. Had jij toch gezegd dat je afstand ging houden? Ja. Ze zijn aan het verven door bij haar. <laughs> ik wil dat wel eens zien. Ja, in een relatie, dat is natuurlijk nooit roze geur en mannen zijn alleen, hè. Zou eens mama daaraan doen? Ik denk dat mama een affaire heeft. Wat is jij? Je vader is compleet paranoia geworden. Oh. Dan moet ik wel bij u blijven logeren, hè. Bij mij. Ja. Huh? Bij leven, dat is gelijk één grote multiple choice waarin ik alle vakjes verkeerd heb bij Maar nee, Dorien, het is serieus dat jij geworden bent. Ja, maar ik weet niet hoe wel het vroeger. Oei, dat is wel een zeer zachte zetel, hè. En mijn ex zegt altijd van, ja, karma, dat keert naar u terug. Ja, ik heb er nog niet veel van gemerkt. Dat wil zijn oplossen. Jullie mijn reactor? Ja, maar dat is geen probleem. Lorien, ik sta klaar voor u. We zijn de oer! Papa, gedraagt u! Dus jij wil dan onze relatie werken, we gaan wel seks met een klant. Wel seks. Dat kan er echt niet meer bij, sorry, maar dat kan er echt niet bij. Welcome back, darlings. We're here at the 27th Hamptons International Film Festival. We're doing press blocks at the 1770 House. And I'm here with this fabulous filmmaker, and she's promoting her film, The Best of Dorian B. Introduce yourself, darling. Yeah, hi, I'm Anke Blondet, and I'm the director of this movie. And I'm very glad to be here in the Hamptons, very thrilled. Now tell us about your film. What is this all about? The best of Dorian B. Yeah, it's actually uh, the worst of Dorian B. Uh, you could say, it's about it's a cliche, it's a or cliche. so to say. Yeah, 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 it's it's against the cliches. No, You're being sarcastic. It, yeah, I'm being. <laughs> if you watch the movie, you could tell I'm being sarcastic sometimes. No, it's a, a woman's portrait actually of a woman called Doreen. And she has seemingly a perfect picture, picture perfect life with two children, a husband, and a handsome, a, rich husband. Yeah, yes, yeah, sort of, yeah. sort of. And uh, they, she has like a thriving veterinary practice as well. But actually, when af just after she read an article in the newspaper about anonymous news about the black hole on the horizon, things start to fall apart, and um, there are like a series of setbacks in her life, quite devastating. Among them, a fallout of an affair, her parents' breakup, and some bad news from the hospital. And she starts to think think things through, and she starts to realize that she has to she has to. Um, let go of the uh, coping mechanisms that she used to have in her life. So in other words, she has to give up her control, yes. some of her control, and she doesn't like that. Uh, no, it's not about control, it's about becoming the best of yourself again. And she, she sort of uh, 
let that slip away during the years as we all do sometimes when you're you know having like a normal casual life going into the ru routines and so she had sort of too much routine and she sort of forgot about her dreams and she's chasing again her dreams in the end oh, it sounds like such a wonderful film it sounds so compelling and so um, enlightening uh, what inspired you to make this film uh, it's uh, it it was inspired by a moment that I had myself in my life where I was having like sort of bad luck in a row as well and that I was had to reconsider my own choices and um, because my parents were divorcing, I had two babies in a row, I couldn't go out anymore, my, my career was not going well, so I was everything was just on my shoulders, like, at once. So it's really based on your life, your experience, it, so to speak? Yeah, my experience, not on my life, like the characters are not real D characters. Different, ca yeah, yeah, the story yeah. is yeah. different. I mean, the, the emotion is really inspired of my own emotions. I always think of that when I start a movie and I start a story, it comes from a deep emotion that I want to share with the audience, and I think it's very uh, recognizable um, that every everybody sort of recognized some aspect of themselves in the movie and that's why I think the audience loves it so much. I would think so and it's I would think that people would go see the movie because after they see the movie they have it's a it's sort of like has a wonderful feeling in your heart makes you feel good afterwards. Yeah it does it does it's a, actually a, while it's not a feel-good movie it gets you I mean it's like a dramedy so there's a lot of humor in it and I think I in love movies like yeah, that yeah. I really do I really love movies like that. That's great yeah and so I think in the end it makes you feel good because she's like stronger. Now, the cast in the film, uh, tell my audience some of the actors that are in the film, in the movie. Well, uh, Kim Snowart, who is the main actress, is ac actually not a real actress. Really? Uh, no, she's not. I, I'm but you decided to cast her. Yeah, yeah. Why, why did you decide to cast this non-professional actor in the title role? Because I... That's interesting. Yeah, That's pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, I guess I, I worked for, as a casting director for a couple of years and so I, I'm very intuitive when it comes to that. I think sort of outside of the box and I casted as well a lot of children for playing in movies and I don't think it's, there's any difference if, if a child can, you know, support a role. An adult can or surely deliver or deliver a line. That's yeah. the most important yeah. thing. You got. Yeah. You have to be able to deliver the line, guys. Because <laughs> yes. if you can't deliver the line, forget it. <laughs> yeah. That's true. No, actually, she's a mom that I met at school. Her uh, our daughters go to the same school, and I was looking at her for quite a while, like already, like hmm, I think she, you know, she loves the camera, or the camera loves her, and uh, so I. After I saw like 30 actresses in Belgium and I couldn't find it, like for real, like I, I couldn't feel it, I asked her to come over and she's great. And so, so she. So you were very happy with the, the performance and how the film came out? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's quite something uh, peculiar. She's, she has like an alarming charm and she's very generous as a person. And you can also tell in the movie that she's a generous player. So this is her first film. She's never done this before. No, she's never done this before. Is she going to continue to act? You're going to put her in more movies. I yeah. can tell. Yeah, yeah. I'm You'll put her in more movies. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sort of attached to her. Right now, we, we, we became really close friends, and um, I really like to work with her again uh, because is we she here this week. No, no oh, that's a not. shame. No, she's not. Uh, she did some other festivals, uh, and uh, this one is like the last festival that I can attend, so I'm really happy to be here as well. Because I'm shooting a series right now, so I, I'm too busy now to to go to other festivals. So, but okay, so you're working on another project already. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the new project? Yeah, I can tell. It's called Red Light, and it's about uh, three women um, whose life get entangled when uh, one of the husbands of the women is missing. Yeah. Oh, interesting, yeah, interesting. Yeah. You like you also like thrillers and mysteries, huh? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like I too. <laughs> I like those kind of movies also. Was this a difficult movie? Did you? Was it hard to make this film? I think the most difficult part was the script. 
Really? Yeah. Did you write the script at all? Yeah, I wrote. I co-wrote it. Oh, you co-wrote, co-wrote it. Yeah, yeah. It was you, like you gave your final approval of yeah. it. Yeah. No, no, I wrote it yeah. but together. Together. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, but I think the script was for me the most difficult part because it's not a. Uh, it's not a plot-driven movie. It's a character-driven movie, and I'm, I, you know, my short movies before that were also like plot-driven most of the time. And for me, it's that's way more easy because you know where the story is going. And if you have a character-driven movie, you don't know exactly where the story is going. So it takes a long time when you nail all the scenes. Is the film in English or? Or Polish, because I know you're Polish, no, right? No, I'm not Polish. What, what are you doing? I'm Belgian. Oh, you're Belgian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's in Dutch. It's in Dutch. Yeah, yeah but it's subtitled in English. Yeah. Where, do, where did you film this movie? In Flanders. Yeah. That's such a beautiful place. Beautiful. Uh, well, uh, uh, there are some beautiful places in Flanders, but mostly I don't think... <laughs> That's my country has a beautiful place, but we have some beautiful spots in it. Yeah, yeah. we have a Flanders here too. Yeah, yeah why? This was uh, back in the day, back in the 1770s. Like this house is, um, there is an area in the Hamptons. It's mostly Dutch. If you notice all the windmills, yeah, you, you yeah, notice yeah. that, right? It's yeah. mostly Dutch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But that's the Netherlands. I I don't live in the Netherlands. Okay. I live in Flanders. Okay. It's like beneath. The Netherlands. But there, what, there are, I would think, there's there's mills there too, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, not so much as in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. Well, your film sounds very exciting. I mean, it sounds like not just exciting, but it sounds very heartfelt. It sounds like a wonderful movie to inspire everyone that, to go see it. Um, can you tell my audience, is there a website that we could go to to find out more information about the film? Yes, it's on Facebook. Dot com. You can just, uh, you know, search for the title. The, the best, best of, of Dorian, Dorian B. B. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> well, you are a delight to talk to. Are you on Filmmake, uh, on Film uh, Facebook? Are you also on yes. uh, Instagram? Yes. So your movie is The Best of Dorian B on Facebook. What about Instagram? Are you on Instagram? Yeah. You I'm, personally? I'm personally on Instagram, and there's also an Instagram account of the movie. Yeah. Uh, uh, as well, but tell my audience your Instagram page. What is uh, your Instagram? It's it's just my name. It's Anke Blonde. Yeah. Un- spell it. A N K E B L O N D E with an accent on it. Gorgeous. <laughs> Give me a kiss, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you so and much. And congratulations on being here at the Hamptons International Film Festival. I'm sure you're thrilled that you're here, right? It's your first time here. It's my first time. You're going to love it here. We'll be back in a moment, darlings, with more interviews right here at the 1770 House at the Press Blocks. Keep watching. Pig Champagne Kisses. dreams. And sometimes they're of the sort that you kind of have a vague memory of them and then it quickly passes. And that's very different from the plane dreams. I remember the plane dreams. I wake up, I'm anxious, my heart's pumping. And I have to tell myself, okay, that was just a dream. But I wake up every day and it's still the same thing. The bad dream never went away.
I thought about the, uh, the line from A Few Good Men the other day when Jack Nicholson said, you want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Sometimes I feel like that about the story. chest that day and uh, been looking for it ever since take care of Mark save the food don't leave the airplane take care of Mark Save the food. Don't leave the airplane. Welcome back, darlings. I'm Konya Kualalane. We're here at the 27th Hamptons International Film Festival. I'm here with one of the filmmakers, and it's all about his film, Three Days, Two Nights. Uh, did I say that yes, correctly? Yes. Introduce yourself to the camera. Uh, my name is John Breen. I'm the director of uh, the documentary feature, Three Days, Two Nights. Tell us about this film. Tell us the synopsis of the film. Okay, so uh, Three Days, Two Nights is a plane crash survival story. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it, it's a story that occurred in 1974. The plane crash was in 1974. Uh, and the two main characters are in, the, in the film are Mark and Andy Godfrey. They were 11 and 8 years old at the time. Oh my God. Is this a true story? It's a true story. So they were 11 and 8 years old at the time of the plane crash in 1974. They lost their parents, they lost a brother and a sister in the plane crash, and they were stuck on the mountain waiting to be rescued uh, in sub-zero temperatures for three days. Uh, Mark, the older brother, lost parts of both of his legs uh, to frostbite. And so the story explores the crash, but also the aftermath of the crash and how they rebuilt their family, their relationship that, with the two, the relationship the two brothers have and had with each other, uh, uh, going through their going through their lives, and uh, and then um, uh, hits on some other subject matter such as you know childhood trauma. Uh, there's uh, uh, some American with Disabilities Act thing in there. There's some issues that relate to sort of what it you know how men deal with emotions and fear and vulnerabilities. So it's a little bit more dynamic than just the plane crash survival thing. There's also uh, uh, Gen John Denver is in the film. Uh, oh, doing really? Stuff. Well, he's not. He's he he was he was uh, obviously he's not alive now. But yeah, he was part. He's part of the story. I their see. their uncle is a senator. He's part of the story. Senator Weicker. Um, so there's there's some dynamic stuff beyond the, uh, the the plane crash aspect of it. And I think you know we use a lot of archival footage, and I think it allows uh, the audience to sort of. Mm, share with them as they reflect upon their childhood, uh, their childhoods and, and their adult life and rebuilding their family. And I think it allows the audience to sort of live that with them and also consider some of these issues uh, in their own lives. There's a lot going on in this movie. There's a little bit going on. A yeah. lot going on. Now, let me ask you, why did you want to make this movie? Um, well, I've known them since I was children. We knew each other before the plane crash, so I've known them since I was six or seven years old. So you used to play with them. Yes. You used to play on the block with these two yes. boys. Best, best friends. And, um, and so we've remained close over the years, and these two guys have inspired me immensely with the way they've conducted themselves and lived their lives and, and try to get past this tragedy. And, 
and uh, you know wanted to be treated just like anybody else and taking responsibility for a family and their lives and and I just and with no complaints and I thought to myself man I mean sometimes I think you know I need to I need to think more about them when I'm going through tough times uh, and just watching how they've done it it's inspired me and uh, it's probably made me a better person and uh, and I think that I thought that if I could somehow get the, that, that story up on film and show those things that have inspired me, I thought it would inspire other people. Uh, it would inspire other yeah. people. Was it your idea to make this movie, or was it their idea? So the genesis of it was that Andy, the younger brother, wrote a... Uh, a he was interested in writing a book about this story, and he wrote a treatment for the book, and it was printed in uh, the Sunday paper of the Aspen Times, where he lives. He wasn't able to find... He ultimately wasn't able to find a writer to write the story with him, or he didn't at that point. I suggested to him the idea of doing a documentary film. I have in-laws who are big documentary filmmakers, and uh, and I thought I would suggest this to them, and then if they were interested in doing it, I could ask my in-laws if somebody would be interested in helping me make this film. And so... Uh, uh, so this is a documentary. It is a documentary, okay. yes. So, so, my, uh, so I asked my brother-in-law if he'd be interested in shooting the film, and, uh, and he came on, and he's the director of, the photo of photography, and so my brother-in-law is the director of photography. My mother-in-law is an associate producer. And you, darling, what are you? You're the filmmaker, the I'm, director. I'm the director and the producer of the film. That's, that's what I, my role is. And, uh, and I'm a first-time filmmaker, so there are many challenges. I learned a great deal, but ultimately it was an incredibly rewarding experience. And to show it here at yeah. the Hamptons International Film Festival, let's hope you win that documentary. Let's hope best documentary, uh, get an Oscar. That would be amazing, right? Well, one step, one step at a time. Listen, darling, I interviewed the director of The White Helmets, and yeah. he won. Oh, really? Yes. That, well, Cognac, I'll take that. It's just... I uh, might bring you luck. <laughs> there we go, Cognac. So, yeah, I hope... My my wish is just that I hope the audience here loves it. I live here, so... I see. I heard uh, before with some of the other interviews, you live here yeah, out on the East End. I do. So, so it's it's just an incredible pleasure for me, really exciting to be able to share this uh, this film with so many people and friends uh, friends of mine and, the, and family in the community and uh, and I feel very lucky and I'm so appreciative to David and and, and Alec yeah and Anne for uh, yeah, for Jason. yes and for uh, uh, for uh, allowing me to screen the film here did it take a long time to make this movie yes we've been at it for about five and a half years so it was a we had a three-year edit uh, and it was a difficult edit but uh, you know I I think, you know, I... What was the hardest part? Was it the, the plane crash? Did they show that in the film? Was that the hardest part of the movie? Well, we, we show a little bit. I mean, we didn't do a, like a huge reenactment of a plane crashing, but we, we did things that, you know, you could feel what, what you know, is a sort of a semi-reenactment, but you could feel the plane crash. But the toughest part of this project was probably the just the fact that it occurs over a 45 year period we're shooting it in the present we're spending a lot of, in the present but we're spending a lot of time in the past their childhoods and watching them sort of grow into men and and it's sort of like an evolvement like is. they're e being evolved from what happened right. this incident to what they are as men today sure sure and and so what happens is that they had they had their family before the crash then after the crash they were taken in by their aunt and uncle so that was another family and then they each you know got married and built their own families made their own families so there's a bunch of different families in there and and it was really hard and delicate to sort of move around those various you know all the people in their lives and those various families so that it wouldn't be confusing to the viewer. Um, but I'd say that was sort of the hardest part, just the fact it was a 45-year story, and it could have been a, you know, we could have probably made a five-hour film about it, but to take a 45-year time span and condense it to 80 minutes, that, that's a challenge. That, that, was, that was a challenge, and, uh, but, but, and I think that's why it took, you know, so long, because, you know, we had to get that part just right. We had to get that part just Tell right. Tell my audience when it's screening here at the festival so it's screening sunday night at the southampton arts center at 8 p.m 
<clears throat> that that uh, screening is already sold out. Uh, and it's also showing Monday at 2 p.m. at the East Hampton Cinema. And there are still a few tickets that remain for that. So if you want to go see that film on Monday, I'd suggest go get tickets quickly. Is it showing anywhere else? Uh, I mean, after this festival, are you putting it anywhere else? It's in a, we're, we're showing it in, at the Denver Film Festival next month. We're showing it. It's actually coming back here in December at the Hamptons Dock Festival. And then we're showing it in Houston. And then we're, we're waiting to hear on a documentary uh, uh, festival in Europe. And then, but we're also in the process. It'd be nice we're, to have it in Switzerland, maybe. That would be neat. That would be neat. And, and then we're also, uh, uh, we're in the process of, of looking for a distributor for a wide release. And we're hoping that will happen in the next few months. That, uh, that we'll, maybe Alec can help you with I've, that. Well, yes, Alec, help me. Um, <laughs> Tell my audience, is there a website that we could go to find out more information about this film? Yes, it's, there is a website. It's www w.3days2nightsmovie.com and you can get we have a, we have an update uh, uh, is there a trailer on YouTube? there's a, there's a trailer it's, it's on YouTube? it's, it's on the website okay. uh, but you can it is probably on YouTube as well but you can I just go right to the tra- to the website there is we give updates on the website for what the film is doing there's a trailer there um, and so yes you can get plenty of information about the film and there what about you do you have an Instagram or Facebook that we could follow you I do not I do I am not on not any, on social I'm, media I'm, huh? I'm, 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 I'm think I'm too old for uh, for social oh, media. no darling you're not too old <laughs> not at but all I, I, I probably should get an Instagram or you Facebook should. page um, but no I have not I have not dipped my foot into the toe into the uh, to the social media realm yet well I could see by your face that you're very happy and excited to have your film here. And why not? The Hamptons International Film Festival is the best film festival in the world. <laughs> we we are the tops here. I want to thank you very much. Give me a kiss, Cognac. darling. Thank you, Cognac. And, and thank you. And we will be back in a moment with more interviews right here at the 27th Hamptons International Film Festival. Keep watching, darlings. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardo. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a bubbly blonde, fabulously dressed to impress. One of a kind girl, I was brought into this world wrapped up in pearls. I love to mingle, though my husband reminds me I'm not single. I meet and greet both the famous and the elite. I ride in limousines drinking the finest champagne, wearing first dazzling diamond jewelry. A girl can't complain. I live in upscale life, dining in the finest restaurants, eating the best caviar for free. And no matter how much I eat cognac, ooh, ooh. I said cognac, ooh, ooh, ooh. This has been a Crybaby Productions, darlings.